In this episode of the How To Get On Reality TV Podcast, we talk about whether or not there's a casting blacklist. Welcome to the How To Get On Reality TV Podcast with Dan Geesling, where I answer your reality TV casting questions once a week. Hey everyone, what is going on and welcome to the next episode of the How To Get On Reality TV Podcast. My name is Dan Geesling. As always, I'm really excited to be here answering your reality TV casting questions once a week, every Monday. Before we jump into that, I believe this is episode 72, 7 Deuce. That was the Refrigerator Perry's number uh, for you guys, Chicagoans. Chicagoans? Anyways, I, I want to give a few people shout-outs. TVWJ, C, C Boars with a Z, Spice Monster, and Ken and Tonic. Thank you guys so much for leaving reviews on iTunes by going to howtogetonrealitytv.net slash iTunes. I appreciate you guys taking the time out to do that and rate the podcast. It helps spread the good word and, uh, you know, I appreciate the love you guys show for the show, show for the show by doing that. Um, but yeah, we have a great question this week from Frank, something we haven't maybe we've mentioned but never really delved into or dove in into. Or went headfirst into. So I'm excited to jump into that question uh, from Frank. Before we do, I want to give you guys a heads up about a little guide that I wrote. Casting, the, the deadline is ticking. There was a few shows. And uh, you guys got a probably about, I'd say, for the American people applying for some CBS shows, you probably have about five to six weeks before things start to get tight. And uh, if you don't want to get tight, that doesn't make sense. But if, if you guys want some help uh, and you don't know where to start in casting and you need some direction and, uh, you know, you want to get started at the base level, the best thing I could advise for you guys outside of listening to all these podcasts, yeah, go back and listen to all of them. That'll help you more than anything. But in addition to that, if you're looking for some like very concentrated step-by-step -step information and uh, getting yourself your story set up, understanding how to shoot your audition video, get everything lined up. I encourage you guys to check out the guide that I wrote. Um, it, it takes you through everything you need to know. And if if the guide is the only thing you bought and you listen to the podcast, you'd be in much better shape than a lot of people that just apply without any preparation whatsoever. So if you want to check out that guide, I encourage you to go to howtogetonrealitytv.net slash guide for all of the information on how to access it. So if you go to howtogetonrealitytv.net slash guide, you can check it out. And uh, it's worked for some people. It's put pe it's put a lot of people in a better position uh, to be cast and have some success in casting. So check it out. Uh, so that, without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this week's question from Frank. What's up, Dan? My name is Frank. I'm from Canada. And for the past two years, I've been applying to Big Brother Canada. All right. And last year, I made it all the way to casting finals. You know, went to the, the casting call. Everything was going good, you know, got the callback, semi-final, final, the whole bang, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, I thought I was going to make it on the show, and then they gave me that phone call saying, you know what, sorry, you ain't part of the puzzle this year. So I was like, all right, all right, no problem, see you next year. Next year comes along, which is this year, season four, and nothing. I didn't get a single callback, no email, just like complete radio silence. And I don't know what happened there, you know, and it got me thinking to... Uh, one of the interviews he did with Jordan Parhar where he was talking about, you know, casting blacklist. So my question to you is, what do you think happened to me in my case? Going from casting finals to like no contact whatsoever the year after. Do you think I got blacklisted? And if so, do you think it's possible to get off that blacklist? Thanks a lot for your help, Dan. Really appreciate it. Peace. All right, Frank, first and foremost, congratulations on getting to the finals. That is not an easy task, but that should show you that you have what it takes. And I always like to tell people that because it's true. And sometimes, I know, Frank, you're disappointed. You didn't get cast on the show. You haven't got a callback. But that flash of making it that far is a great sign. Um, and you bring up a few interesting points that I want to make sure we talk about. The first thing you said was the casting told you you weren't a part of the puzzle that year. That's really important. Okay, each cast of no matter what show you're applying for, there's, for lack of a better term, there's holes and there's things that need to be stuck together. So, you know, every piece has someone that connects to them in a positive way and someone that connects them in a negative way. And there's, you know, different, they try to put everything together so it makes sense from a demographic standpoint, from a visual standpoint, everything. So... You know, for you, it, it could just be, you know, the roll of the dice and, and just that it didn't work out that year for you. I know what's discouraging for you is that you make it to the finals and the next year you didn't hear anything back. 
Of course, that's discouraging. And uh, the, a lot of that can be applied to one thing. You know, they already know who you are. They know what you bring to the table. And maybe you didn't fit this season's puzzle whatsoever at all. And what I would tell you is to honestly and as closely as you can objectively without getting over emotional about it, which I'm sure you wouldn't, Frank, um, is look at the cast that was put out this year. Do you see yourself fitting in any of those roles because someone may have fit that role just a little bit better than you, whether it's, you know, the same demographic, same origin, same, same, um, same occupation, too close and similar of looks, because that's enough, you know, to, to knock you off from one season. And and, what I hope this doesn't do, Frank, I hope this doesn't discourage you from continuing to apply and apply again, because you bring up, you know, you said in in one of the previous episodes we interviewed uh, Jordan Parhar, who went through the process and got cast on Big Brother uh, Canada, and that was actually episode 42. So if you've never listened, it's one of our most listened to podcasts. You got how to get on realitytv.net slash episode 42. You can listen to the interview with Jordan on how his entire casting process was and his experience. Uh, but he mentioned, you know, that there's this blacklist. And here's the way you need to visualize the casting blacklist. First, number one, does it exist? Number two, can you get off it? So a casting blacklist, in my opinion, is people that go above and beyond in terms of annoyances and in terms of, you know, doing inappropriate things. So say, for example, you know, you're the crazy person that, you know, continues to send, you know, chocolates or weird things to, you know, the casting producers. That's probably going to get you in the in the friend zone, or in the, worse than the friend zone, the creep zone. So that's that's the kind of blacklist. But for you, Frank, let's say you went to the finals and let's say you just blew it and you didn't have a great experience or you didn't feel like you did well. That's not going to put you on the blacklist. You know, that's not that's not what it's about. So just because you made it to the finals and it didn't work out doesn't mean it's never going to work out for you. And I hope you don't think of it that way because that's going to mess up your your game mentally and how you present yourself and the confidence in which you present yourself. Like, oh, what's wrong? with me why wasn't I good enough to go on the season don't even go down that path because it's at that point it's out of your control if you made it to the finals and you feel like you did a great job you know you should feel confident that it's going to happen again it may not happen exactly when or how you want it um, and I think that happens to a lot of people not a normal people that apply for reality tv uh, it's just a matter of how you approach it and so to answer your question there's a blacklist but not in the way you would think um, you know there's people that get written off because they do a lot of creepy things to, to people in casting and and you know they're over the top and, and maybe they're they're a little too aggressive in some certain ways but that doesn't sound like that was the case for you it sounds like you went to finals you gave it your best shot and you know the next year you didn't hear anything back and sometimes that happens the other thing I would, I would ask you to take a look at is you know did you change up your audition video in a drastic way because if you've made it to finals, I wouldn't drastically change your approach. I may tweak a few things, but whatever, you know, that's the horse that got you to the, the end of the finish line. Don't change up horses if that makes sense. But anyways, Frank, I hope this helped out. As a small thank you, we're going to send you a free digital copy of my story, How a Normal Guy Got Cast on Reality TV. And if you want your question answered on the podcast, just like Frank, go to howtogetonrealitytv.net slash ask, and there's a voicemail app where you can leave your question. Um, you can do it from your phone, your computer. It's really easy to do. And, um, yeah, leave your question, and, and we answer your questions every Monday. But, Frank, thank you so much for submitting your question. And don't give up, man. I wish you best of luck. And you get if you made it to finals, you got what it takes. Don't ever forget that. All right, so that wraps up episode 72 of the How to Get on Reality TV podcast, 72. We're getting up there in age, you know, 72. I mean, that's about the time where, you, you know, you retire, you, you, you ride your Schwinn bicycle around the neighborhood, you, you know, you, you spend your, your final dollars on a glass of lemonade from little... Anyways, let's just... <laughs> Uh, let's wrap things up here, but I want to tell you guys, if, if you if you want to get on reality TV before you're 72 riding your Schwinn bicycle, not that you couldn't get on if you're 72, um, why don't you give yourself a little head start by checking out the guide that I wrote. It's going to help you out. Um, it'll help out your bicycle riding skills. That's not true, but it, you just check it out. It will help put you in a position to be successful in terms of understanding your story, drawing out your story, creating your elevator pitch, understanding how to frame your audition video, how to approach the things that come after the audition video. It's just, bottom line, if you go into casting without any resources and you go into casting with a guide, you're going to be much better off with the guide. And, uh, you know, a lot of people that have purchased the guide and used the guide, you know, w- would stand by that statement as well as so I'm speaking for you guys. But anyways, you can check it out by going to howtogetonrealitytv.net slash guide. 
And uh, thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you guys for the love on the iTunes reviews. It was nice to see that little uptick because it's been a little radio silent for a while. Um, But I will see you guys next Monday. Have a great weekend. Stay safe and best of luck in your casting journey. Later.